How can you get started with Civil Sam development in a much easier manner rather than struggling like a lot of other people struggled in the past? So let's get started. So uh, I'm calling it bootstrapping Civil Sam development. Uh, how many of you are into programming or have any programming knowledge out here? Okay. So here's the brief agenda for this session. Uh, I'm going to quickly walk through how you can set up basic uh, CVCM on your machine quickly. Then we're going to look at some of the uh, tools that's available in CVCRM to generate some basic code without need to know how to do each of them. So just code generators. Then we'll uh, going to take a look at a simple uh, API driven uh, action, how you can call an Ajax API, get the responses, a quick example, some of the debugging techniques and how to enable debugging. And uh, we're going to look at that changing some existing functionality in CVCRM based on some of one of your use case and try to actually get that done in the given time. All right. And uh, Please feel free to stop me if you have any questions and as we move along. For just for the sake of this presentation, just to keep things simple, I'm assuming you have a LAMP or MAM stack up and running on your system. Uh, you have Node.js, Git, or Unix or Bash shell, and a fairly basic knowledge of PHP, JavaScript, and HTML because this is a big thing. So I'm just assuming few things. Is it fair to assume? Some of, yeah. I can see a lot of heads nodding, so I can assume. All right, so, but if you have any questions, you feel free to stop me and then we can just get into the specifics. So uh, before we get into the setup, uh, it's very important to understand why you need to modify certain things in CV. Because uh, as, a, as a developer, it's like a instinctive nature is, okay, I don't like this. Why don't I go in the code and modify the stuff? But that's not the approach I would recommend to begin with. There are, the first thing I would like to recommend is sh what you want to do for share that with the community. CVCM is a very vibrant community. Share it using blog or share it on Stack Exchange, ask people, this is my use case, how can I implement it? Because many a time what happens is that there are ready-made extensions which are available, ready-made, uh, some people have already implemented it, they can help you to get started with. So it's very important to understand what's there before you get started, as in any community. CV is a very responsive community, so hopefully <coughs> you'll get your answers to Stack Exchange and all the other mediums. So it's just ask if you have an idea rather than just getting into coding directly. Okay, so yeah. So I want to introduce you to something called CV Sam Build Kit. How many of you heard about this? Good. Yeah. So uh, CV Sam Build Kit is nothing but it's a collection of tools and script for CV Sam uh, development. So it allows you to do various actions like creating a sandbox, up and running within few minutes, it installs your, so basically it allows you to simply like, okay, let me create a Drupal instance or WordPress instance with CVCRM 4.6. You just run the command, it will do the rest. Let me create an instance of CVCRM latest version with maybe Drupal, it will just create it within one command. Let's look at some of the detailing how this works. As always, uh, these are simple instructions. Uh, I'm going to share the resources at the end of the session, but it's as simple as this. If you have curl, just run this command. If you have git or if you're familiar with git clone, just git clone to end directory and run this command. These are basic stuff, just few commands and you'll get build kit installed on your machine. 
and don't forget to add so this is I just added this step because a lot of time people forget to add them in their path and like temporary so that it's there set up in your path correctly. These are a few list of services uh, that are available once you get this package installed on a machine. Like you can generate the sample code using a utility called civics. You can uh, git scan, which is uh, another utility. Uh, you can do CV lint, which allows you to check for formatting that CV checks. So when you are, let's say you are submitting a patch to CV CRM, it's always good to run CV lint so that you don't get any syntax or formatting errors. So this makes sure that uh, this ensures that you are following this coding standard as mentioned in CVCRM documentation. And then it has other services uh, like for testing, there's the Karma for testing JavaScript. Once you get all this set up, then it's just a matter of this command. So this, what this command does is, it's, it's saying it's create a website called D47 with a secret password there, admin admin. <laughs> CV version master, you can specify the type. So we have various types. This is one of the type called Drupal demo. And this is the URL that I need to create. Once you hit that, it is going to automatically create your entire, it is going to download Drupal for you. It will download the essentials, dependency modules related to that. And then it's going to create a CV from master branch. It's going to get checked out and set up entire stuff. After you finish this, just make sure you uh, restart your Apache or CL or, or Nginx, whichever you're using. And that's it. So once that, your website should be up and running. I just did a quick change. And my, where's my website? Yep. So you'll get this website up and running like this. So this is a URL which I specified, so D47. And I have my website up and running. The complete instructions, the various things you can find on buildkit.cv7.org where there are other instructions available just to quickly go through it. This is a website. Where you can see how you can build a site and various commands that are available. So this is how you create a WordPress demo. And we use the same thing for generating our demo. So it's just the same. Or you can, if you want something clean without the generated data, you can use this. And this URL is billkit.cvcm.org, so it's available. And you can create your custom build also. So, back. Now let's look at the how we can generate a uh, example using a tool called Civics. So. Uh, for one quick thing which I would recommend when you are doing any custom development is always good or handy to create an extension so that all your code is as a part of that extension and not touch the main CV7 code base. So the first step what we are going to do is now create an extension. Let me bring up my notes. So when you install this uh, using the uh, build kit, 
by default Bilkit creates an extension directory in default slash ext folder so I'm just on my system I'm just going to go there cd Okay, now I'm in my extension directory. And then I'm going to run. This is the way Civix generates various modules for creating extension. I'm just going to run the help so that. So these are various parameters that are available. For example, you can specify the full name, you can specify the author name, email, licensing, <coughs> and some other settings. So I'm just going to generate the extension. So before that. Let me log in and check. Extension could be found at administer. Settings, manage extension. This is a screen that is going to list you what are the available extensions. So these are all the sample extensions that are currently available. So let's create our own extension. So this is a magic command, civics so generate module and an extension name. And you move enter. And it prompts, do you want to enable this extension? I say yes. Enable the extension. And then when if I open my extension directory here and refresh it. There you go our extension it is showing fix me because it's the default generated and all the def definitions so if you look at here it, it creates a directory by the name of the extension so let's go into the directory let me show you basic structure so this is a basic structure that it creates it has this is the civix auto generated file which ideally you wouldn't need to touch this is the file let me show you a bit this is a file which inherits lot of CVCRM's uh, hook mechanism so if you are defining a new hook or adding this is the file you must be looking at info file defines your name of the extension so this will fix me if we change something let's say say con session and then if you refresh sequence sessions here and it has other info which you can just update your XML file and then it will up update it appropriately. Then you, are, you got the licensing part, what the package name and then it, there are other folders like templates, CRM which has 
just creating a blank slate for uh, other files to be added. So, we will come back to that why you need all these other things all right. So, this is the basic structure that it gets created using civics. So, next next thing uh, wow, ok this. So, if you are aware CVCM uh, has lot of hook definition let me share with you. So, this is the hook reference documentation on wiki, it has it defines all the hooks that are available in CVCRM that allows you to do various action for and it just if for example, if I click on each of them pre hook. So, it this defines with an example what the hook is used for and what are the various parameters that are available and how you can use that hook to achieve specific actions. Uh, how many of you are aware of the hook? Most of you. Yeah. So, hook is a basically it is the terminology in Drupal also where you can use hook mechanism to by default alter certain very uh, uh, behavior in CVCRM without actually modifying the code directly. Okay. So, now let us try to generate a simple page using this. Uh, another command. So, now I am inside the directory of a newly created extension. So, I want to just generate a page called greeter and this is the path that I want to specify in the CVCRM. I just do that hit enter and that is it it creates the file name. So, this is a file name, this is a path and it gets added to my file system. So, if you look at file structure now in CRM folder, this is my extension name, I got page and name of the page is greater that is what we defined. Similarly, in the template you get CRM page and you get greater dot so, it just gets created and the system uses XML menus to define the path or URL. So, since we said we wanted uh, CVCM slash greater, it automatically adds a menu item for it. So, this is the only thing now once you when you are developing an extension once you add any menu item you need to just uh, reload the menu. So, I am just going to reload the menu because something does not work. And once you reload the menu, I am going to just navigate to the link that I defined slash greeter. There you go. So, now we got a simple basic page up and running using just one simple command and this is the text that we have specified in a template file. <laughs> <laughs> so, all the magic happened directly. So, so similarly uh, you can also create uh, forms. So, pa so, so there pages uh, consider page as a nothing but it is just a listing or it is just a view only screen and form is where you do any actions where you have select element or any of the form elements. So, in this example I am just creating a help let, let me say again you can always use help where you can you will get the what is the web part what is the class name that you want to define. And in this case, I am creating, I am saying civic generate me a form, this is a form name and this is the path that I need and then I will enter it. So, it just 
creates a sample files for you. So, now if you look at your structure, now we have this form here, this is the name which you generated, this is a sample code that is being generated. Similarly, in the templates, we have again form here and with the template which is the sample code here. So far, so good, simple. Let us see. Let me off on. Okay, so now I am just again like previously, I am going to just do menu rebuild because whenever you register this URLs, you need to just do so that CVSM system is aware of this new URLs that have been generated. And I said fag color, there you go. These are simple form that has been generated with the options and once you submit, just the indication that okay, you have picked purple. So, it tells you like just an example code that entire process being handled here, you have submitted and so if you look at the code. it handles most of the rendering and the, in the post process, this is a, where it gets the value and say you have picked up this and it shows in the message. So, pretty straightforward, this is the way you edit the colors. So, you do not have to get much into detailing. So, now you got page up and running and you have got form up and running without knowing much how to get into quick forms and pages. Similarly, you there is there are other actions which you can generate. So, if you look at this, right. so we look at the menu, you can generate a case type. Okay, much better. Yeah, you can generate custom menu in the post. If you want to gen create a structure for a report, you can say civics generate report. If you want to make a copy of an existing report, you can also use a copy action saying that civics report copy this report into my report and add it to a contact listing. So, not only you generate a new report, but you can take existing report as an example to create a new instance. If you want to create a custom search, there is another option called civic search and then you can generate a same custom search and or you can copy it. So, there are these various actions which are available. Also, if you want to create a new API for which is specific to extension, you can use this. Most importantly, you can generate a basic structure for test. How many of you like testing? How, come on, <laughs> not a single hand, that is disappointing. Yeah, so you can create a test for your extension. So, this allows you to create a basic structure and it is very easy and then you can walk through each and every instruction how you can do uh, configure your extension part and then as simple as it you just say civics test this is my test name and then you just does the and it gives you how much what you have done in the test result. So, if this is as simple as that it can get I think to generate a test and run a test suit without need to know any other knowledge. All right. So, for everyone with, with me, hope so. All right. So, this is, so now till now we have looked at basic stuff of creating or generating new pages, creating a form object and now let us look at the various AJAX APIs which you can use. So, before getting AJAX APIs, this is the 
I just want to re-emphasize on something called API Explorer, which is already part of a CVCM instance. So this is very important because it gives you a basic overview of what are various kinds of API are available and how you can use those APIs in various mediums. Like if you're using, using REST protocol, this is how you're going to use it. If you're using a Smarty, that is not a template. You can directly call API using this mechanism and do a looping. If you're using a PHP code or if you're using in JavaScript code this way, or if you're using in Drush, if you have Drush installed, Drush is basically Drupal thing, you can use this way. Just to give you a few examples. If you go to support, developer, here is the API Explorer. And in here you get, see all the entities which are available in CVCRM. Let's say for example, contact, and I want to say, these are the various actions that are available, contact, get, and then I'm going to say execute. It fetches you the data. If you see here, this shows all the data which is available. And this is all the actions that are available. And if you look at the example, it will show you the example again. So if you say contact, show me the example of contact get. So these are various examples how you can how I can use that in my system. And again, if you want to look at the code that generates a particular API, you can say contact and then you can say get. So this is a piece of code that generates this API. So you can exactly know what kind of code or if there's any missing. Right? So so now let's get into using Ajax API. So for the sake of this example, I've done some basic code here. So first thing, uh, what I would recommend doing any JS work is you create an independent file and add that to your resource and use our resources mechanism to add the file uh, to, to the CVCRM. So in this case, I'm creating a, this file called foo.js. So let me create a file. So I'll say, let me make dir.js folder and in JS go here and I'll say touch foo.js. So I have JS here and I have foo.js, for now it's blank. So once you create a file, next step is to include this JS where you want to do any actions. So for, the, for this example, let me include it in our greeting, greeter page. So, so if I go to greeter example, this is our page and then I'll use this code, resources code and I'm just add it in here. So what this code does, let me quickly, so See, uh, uh, resources adds, uh, allows you to add various resources like JavaScript or CSS, or you can define some variables which are accessible in a JS directly. So in this example, I'm saying add a script file which belongs to this extension 
which resides in JS folder foo.js and also this uh, way you can assign variables I am saying add a variable in this namespace this is the uh, key and this is the value of that variable simple in PHP are defined so that you are, we can see this available in your JS code. So now we have defined this so let us see if it gets included on our page. If I reload, yes. let us say foo, yes, there you go. So, our file got included here. So, now let us add some logic to the file so that this example makes much more sense. So, I have this sample code. Oops. So, this is a blank foo.js. So what this do? So, so basically this is the what we are going to do is we are going to add a button in a template on click of button it is going to show the information about that contact as simple as it and it is going to call this AP, this is the API convention to get uh, if you look at this get single API I am passing the contact ID and then getting the data and it will show the message what the contact is it is. I am going to use the sample code to add a button and I am going to go to my page. Okay. If you notice here like every like this is the mirror structure for PHP and templates. So, if you see here like CRM folder there is a hello world, there is a page, there is a gritter.php and similarly in the template CRM folder hello page gritter.tpl. So, it is very if you know the page it is very easier to find where the template is and the vice versa. So, now I am adding this button and this is the contact ID that I am going to pass say 123 in this case, close this, ok. Now, we have a button here. So, on click of this button we are doing two actions here. On click of button get person, we are getting the person here and we are saying show message. Show message function is defined here. So, message does is that a CVSM alert? It first prints the variable that we are defined so that you are aware how to define variable. So, this is the my namespace dot foo, that is the variable we are defined, and then it prints the what is the name of the person that we retrieve using our this API. So, in this example if I click now I should get an alert the same my page there you go. So, it is a hello this is the name of the contact 1, 2, 3, oh that is interesting. and it prints the value of what was the foo value which I defined which was bar which we define in our PHP code. So, this is a quick example. So, similarly you can do some of the Ajax actions like I want to show the relationship of a contact and add a button and write a similar logic like in here to get the relationship and assign it to the template and show it accordingly. All right.
So, so next thing, uh, how are we doing with time? Okay, good. Fifteen minutes. So we covered customization. This demo. Now I'm going to go through the debugging part a bit. This is an interesting code which I like. I think all of you will agree with me. <laughs> so, so the uh, the way you enable debugging CVCRM is you go to the screen which you can get. Administer system settings and debugging and arrow handling. So, if you are running on Drupal, there is an option where you can enable add the log to Drupal's watchdog table. If uh, so, you can enable that if you want to, which is useful when you are doing a development. This is the way you can enable the CVCRM. And please note this, this feature should not be enabled on production website. So, make sure you turn it up once your site is pushed. Display backtrace, it, so uh, whenever there is an error, it shows the backtrace, the generation of the error. There are various other options available. One of the option is, if you append any URL with smarty debug underscore one, it's going to show what are the variables which are CVCM uh, assigned to the Smarty template. CVCM uses Smarty templating engine, so it's going to show you what all variables you, which are assigned to template. You can do this uh, directly clean up, which deletes the temporary caching part, remove, okay, this gets cut off here. Clean up true, it clean up the upload files. So let's enable and I'll show you one option. Let me enable debugging, debug backtrace and say save. And Copy paste smarty debug equal to one and you'll get the pop up, but I have pop up blocker so yeah. So this shows you what all elements or what all data is being assigned to the templates. And then if you want to do some manipulation or add something to your template, you can use it. So quick example of our, let's look at our greeter page. Oops. I don't know how did I get that. Oops, too many, too many things. Look, I don't know where, maybe it is. Okay, so this page doesn't have much assigned the template file. So it shows this is what we are assigned. So if you notice like one of the important tip you should see is like whenever you view source any page in CV, view page source, if you search for dot TPL file. It shows you what TPL file is called in this page. So it's present in all pages form. So you can it's easier way of recognizing where the template file it is. So this is a nice way. And 
and there's one option and then so other options like you can look at the yeah so if you enable and backtrace equal to it will show you the what is the backtrace for this particular page Mm. Oh, there's no error. There's no error here, so it's not sure. All right, so. So now let's uh, let's look at changing some existing functionality in CV. Do you guys have anything in mind particular that we want to we should try to change? Any use cases or anything you want to change, which is minor, not changing entire UI. We got like ten five minutes maybe to finish here. All right. So let's see. So maybe let's let's look at this then. Let's look at my favorite form, which is a huge form, a contact create form. Click click it. All right, so let's say simple example. Okay, let's let's move middle name after last name, just for the sake of it. So first, so there so there are like there are few ways you can do it. One is using custom templates which is you figure out what template it is and in the template you go and move that and move to next to it. Second way you use either JS or CSS for the same purpose. I would definitely won't recommend custom templates because if you because custom template is a technique where you can override existing forms in CVCM using your customizations. What happens during upgrade usually is like if CV7 has modified that particular template, then you have to look at your customizations and and add those modifications and your customization. So it becomes a much more lengthier process. The easiest way I would recommend or uh, one easier for you, this use case would be adding some JavaScript and just moving this and appending it to the after last name. So before that, we should get a handle of this structure, let's see what do we have here. Middle name, middle name. All right, so we have unique identifier ID, middle underscore name. So let's look at. Okay, so well, now we know middle name is access. Now let me, it's in the div container. So, table, right. So, what I want to do is fetch the HTML. Parent. Um, it's always good to experiment in the console screen, then you implement the JS, so it's a faster way to manipulate things. So, for example, if I want to just hide middle name, I would just do let's let's do a quick hide first before. It's hidden, and if you want to show again, it's show. 
So, let us let us add this simple example just to make sure our code works. So, what I am going to do is I am going to use our existing foo.js here and going to just add in the example out here dollar parent height and now if I go back to this form and refresh it does not work. <laughs> Did I do Let me check if the template gets included or file gets included. Oh, right, all right. It is because this file gets included only on, we are included it in the run section for the greeter page. So, uh, so you can include this thing. So, what we are going to do is let us include it using a hooks mechanism. So, if I will go back to the my link, let us me use my example. I am going to use a hook called a CVM preprocess, which is being this hook is always called on every page. So, ideally what you would do is in this case <coughs> let us check the form name because we want to include it just only on this page to hide the ok. The form name is contact form. So, what I would do is if dollar form name equal to a so I am going to include this code. Let us see now if it gets. There you go, okay, good. And if it included, it would have removed a ta -da. so it removed a middle name. All right, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted to add it after last name. Damn. <laughs> I thought we are done. <laughs> so let's see if you have any other handlers for this similar to what we did, which was Okay, it has last name. So, we do not want to hide it, but so that we can see it. Console. Okay, we have last name dot parent. Okay, so what we want simply we can do it. Let's see if I can get the HTML. 
Everything let's start append. Let's try to see what happens there. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to trying to append middle name after last name. That's what you're trying. Where did my last name disappear? Middle name disappear. Maybe append it, let's see. Middle name, so we think so. Name, parent, <coughs> after there you go. Yeah, that's it. So we achieved this minor thing. So now you just like this. That's the code, and now if you reload this page, okay, it's something is yeah, yeah. <coughs> Thanks, Christian. And let me try to do maybe it's template. It's caching problem. Oh, do I have it on top too? Let's see. Nope. Food or chairs, which is perfect. Let me try clearing the cache. To template. So if you go for the function. Well, that's basically it is last name, middle name. It's going to work. I think you're uh, okay. That's it. <laughs> Thank you.